Hey everybody, this is Tom, aka Minus Worlds, and I'm here with the Castlevania uh, that was recently purchased for $90,000 on eBay. In case you missed it, recently a burst print factory sealed Castlevania on NES sold for an unbelievable $90,100. Articles are now being written about the game and the sale, and the video game collecting hobby is in a bit of a frenzy about this. So what makes this particular copy of Castlevania so special, other than it still being brand new factory sealed from 1987, is that this copy is part of the first production run that still uses a built-in hang tab on the back of the box. This distinction makes it one of only now six known copies to exist in collectors hands. That's it. Of course, given this insane price tag, a lot of the prevailing thoughts from people commenting on this are that it's fake or it's a scam in some way, it's never gonna get paid, and of course everyone's favorite comment whenever they see an expensive video game. But, shortly after this auction ended, the community actually did find out who the buyer was by linking their anonymous eBay ID to their profile. It actually ended up being a known collector in this space who just happens to have been looking for this particular game now for 23 years. He did buy it, he did pay for it, and thankfully he did decide to come on the channel and share some thoughts and feelings about spending $90,000 on a video game. So say thank you to every single patron who helps support the channel as well as the YouTube members. I can't do this without you guys. Guys, hit the like button and enjoy the interview. We'll just jump right in then, man. Uh, uh -huh. You spent 90000 on this. You probably saw the internet is kind of uh, in a big flurry on this. Sure. Are you the only person who doesn't realize you got scammed on this? I Well, I keep in mind, I bought it with somebody else, so we both got scammed. <laughs> so two of you got scammed then. Yeah. <laughs> and let, let's see it. Do you have it there with you? I do. I do, yeah. My God. Yeah. CGC graded now too. All finalized. Yeah. Yeah, nine nine four eight plus. Um, yeah, CGC decided to go with CGC. So take take us there. You just won the eBay listing for ninety thousand dollars. Like, what are you thinking? What's next? Yeah, so definitely surprised. Um, I I thought like, it was going to be unattainable. I did not think we would win it. Um, you thought it was going for even more. I did. Okay, yeah. and, and and I was willing to go more, but um, I still. I mean. Y one's never come up for public auction right were so, you gonna cross six figures like were you prepared to go over a hundred thousand yeah we, we were we were wow. um so i just i had it i had the the, the value quote unquote and i don't like using that term but just to put it into context i thought it was probably say 130 to 140 okay so i was willing to go just about there to get to get it done so you can tell everyone you got this at a discount yeah, absolutely. You got, it on sale. You got yourself a deal. Yeah, it was on the clearance rack. So the bid ended. What happens? I freaked out. You know what I mean? Like this. This is a game, that, and I, I've said it before, but I was chasing this game for over twenty years, uh, and that's you know that's kind of what happens in this hobby because the population numbers are so small. You know, five five first prints before this one popped up, and and you know you kind of relegate yourself to i'm never gonna have this opportunity but then when it popped up um and the decision was made to really go after it and then to get the winning bid uh it was crazy you know i was freaking out and then it's like then it hits you like logistically this thing's 15 2, miles away there's not a chance that i'm having it shipped like even though i've so i have insurance that would cover something like okay. that doesn't matter if something happens with insurance sure you get your money back but as you know that's not replaceable so i wasn't taking any chances yeah it's let's funny go more on the the like rationale side of that then um why why castlevania why ninety thousand? what like why why yeah i'm sure that's what yeah, everyone's curious about <laughs> of course and and for me and it was it goes i mean it literally goes back to my childhood so castlevania for me was the first game that my mother ever bought me and I still like it's literally a core memory. I still remember because back then we were we were ordering from paper catalogs and it was it was broken out by publisher and then it would be a list of their games. Right. So rewind to this was early in the life of NES. I I, I got in fairly early, but we we didn't have a lot growing up. I, I believe the NES was actually gifted to us. Um, so but then we needed games. Right. <laughs> so my mother said, you can pick one game. And I said, okay. So we had this little paper thing. I'm going through it. And I'm, on, I'm literally on the phone. I remember they were in, it was a company in California. 
And I'm looking in Konami, Castlevania. I'm like, that sounds cool. No description. Literally, publisher, name of the game. And then you scroll to the right in the price. So I'm on the phone. I'm like, what's Castlevania? And he's like, oh, it's basically this game where you've got to kill Dracula. I'm like, tell me more. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah so exactly. Right. I want to kill Dracula. And so he, I'm like, that sounds really good. And he's, I'm like, how are the graphics? And he's like, oh, they're they're good. And, you know, Konami did have some awesome graphics, you know, er, in the early. Oh, yeah, for early stuff, the, for sure. Yeah, good. so I, we ordered it and it came in and I fell in love with it. And I played that game to death. But yes, I did. I did buy it with a, a, a close childhood friend. Yeah, how is that going to work? So do I do you both put in. Forty five thousand yep. dollars. He gets it on weekends. What do you guys? How's yeah, it we going? share we share custody. I get him on on vacations. <laughs> yeah, um, how's that gonna work? <laughs> so yeah, so what? How that went down was so we were actually away on um, vacation. So every year for my wife's birthday and St. Patrick's Day, we go away together as families. So his family's up there, my family's uh, up in the mountains, and so Castlevania got listed on it was a Saturday night, I think it was. But I get up Sunday morning and I'm doing my normal scroll through Facebook, scroll through Instagram stuff. And Greg Pavich had actually thrown it up in one of the, um, I think it was his um, factory sealed Nintendo Facebook group. He posted it up and I'm like, no way. Like, there's like, like, like we know it's, it's never come up for auction before. So, um, so I click, you know, on eBay and I look and I'm like, you know, and instantly I knew it was legit. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. So first thought was, there's no way this thing's going to make it to next Saturday and still be up for auction, right? Yep. Yeah, um, people are but, sharks in this hobby. Almost every auction gets ended and, it, you know. Right. Yep. And I, I was like, I was just so genuinely excited that I went downstairs and we're all having breakfast. And I went on like this 10 minute rant about how cool this was. So my best friend, like he he's not in this hobby. He He knows about it through me. He thinks it's cool. Um, but he's just not in the hobby. So told him about it. That was that. Or so I thought. And I knew, like I said, I knew it was going to go close to six figures. So it, it, back of my head, I'm like, I'm not even going to make a run at it. But I thought it was legitimately awesome that I was going to be able to see another one come out. And then like two days later, I get a text message from my buddy. And he's like, what do you think it's going to take to get the Castlevania? And I was like, and I told him, I said, I think it's going to get close to six figures, if not over. And he said, okay. He said, I think I, I think I want to go after it. And I, I seriously thought he was joking. And I was like, text him back. And I'm like, wait, are you serious? And he said, yeah. He said, let's touch base in a couple of days. So we talked a couple of days later. And he's like, yeah, I'm, let's do this. Like, what do you, what's the plan? So I said, all right, well, all right, let's go together and like see if we can get this thing done. So then, I mean, a lot of people like, um, you remember you go back to the dentist, Eric Nyerman, right? Bought some stuff with other people. That was a big point of conflict. Sure. Um, you bought into this with another guy now. Uh, what yep. is the plan? Are you guys keeping this? How, how does this work? So, like I said, we had a plan. And and I, of course, my my plan is to hold it, right? <laughs> yeah, well, that that's what I mean. You said he's not yeah, a, we, a we game guy. We both got to be on board with that. So we talked about it. And we both agree that it's, let's get it. Let's hold it. So I know a lot of people were like, especially at that price point, because I think a lot of people were surprised it didn't go over six figures. And then when they saw that it graded a 9.4A+, they're like instant money. And I get that. But it didn't matter for us what it graded. It was never going to get flipped to Heritage. Um, it was never going to get sold immediately after. So we don't have any set time frame as to when it's going to eventually, you know, it will. Of course, because you have two owners, you have two different people eventually it's going to move on to another collector but it's not any time in the near term like the the we fully agree that we want to get it and we want to hold it because for me as a collector i would there would be no i wouldn't sell it you know being my grail yeah is this like the number one item you've ever owned now you've been in the hobby a long time it's the number i would think it's the number one sealed item for sure i've had some really cool sealed stuff and i'm really lucky to say that I still think to this day, the coolest item I've ever owned is the Zelda Proto. Right. Um, I, I touched on that just briefly yeah. in my uh, yeah, video yeah. there. And it was funny because I didn't know where you were going with that video. But as soon as you started talking about the most expensive games ever, I'm like, I know exactly where he's going. <laughs> uh, and it's so funny because like I hadn't that day, I actually thought about it. And I was like, 
wait a second. I'm like, the Zelda Proto is on eBay still the highest sale ever. And I was like, yeah, as far as I, I could just... find anything confirmed, like there's yeah. so many like, oh, NWC for a hundred thousand yeah, yeah. dollars, and it's like, no, no. And I agree. I, I think it's it's great now that we can actually tie that back, you know, because uh, Terra Peak, we yeah. can actually look to make sure something's been actually sold. But yeah, I agree. I don't, I, I don't think, and I know, like, as far as being recognized, that pro, the proto was the Zelda proto was still the highest on record. Um, but I still think that Zelda proto now knowing the full story of it, I, I didn't have the full story when I sold it. And I it gotcha. changed some things. Um, but I think now knowing the full story behind that particular piece, I still think that's, not just that piece, but the story behind that particular piece is, is, in my opinion, the coolest story in video game collecting. So with exist. with that, I mean, we're gonna like you're gonna have to come back on. We have to hear the whole story about the Zelda Proto. I'd I'd love to because honestly, I don't think that story's ever been not publicly. It's definitely never been told because I didn't have the whole story until about two years ago. Oh, well, there, <laughs> were, there were major gaps missing in the story that were really important to the story. And when I say that that thing should not exist, it should not exist um but it does and the fact that it's not at nintendo's headquarters is is really insane so and yeah, for I'd anyone who for doesn't that. know the straight context here in 2012 i believe right you sold a zelda yeah, prototype on ebay for fifty five thousand dollars. Fifty five thousand. yeah yeah that's it you know 2012 what it is that is insane insane it's practically, it's, it's insane. With that, I mean, congratulations, man. I appreciate you sharing you. all of this. These are the stories we just never actually get to hear in this hobby, yeah. so. Yeah, and hopefully people realize that it's not money laundering. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> exactly. Should we be like, is this the last time I get to speak with you? The FBI will be busting yeah, down your right? door soon enough? It's just funny because, like, I actually spent over a decade in the um, investment world. So literally part of my job was to be trained on money laundering and what to look for. You're an expert to do it. And and the yeah, I'm an expert to do it. And I chose the highest sale ever on a public platform to launder money. I mean, it, it literally is the complete opposite of what you would do. But of course, immediately people are like money laundering. And it's just, okay, if that's, if that's what you want to go with, then, then go with it, sure. It's easier for some people to believe that then that you exist, people like you exist, who just right. dropped ninety thousand dollars on a video game. But dude, I'm gonna get you back on. We'll talk about that Zelda cool. Proto um soon, soon enough. Awesome, I'll tell man. another story. Sounds I could good. I could talk to you all day. Up. So <laughs> right, all right, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, dude. Thanks for having me on. Congrats all on right. the Castlevania. Thanks so much. I appreciate going, man. that, man.